Hi everybody and thank you for joining us on our TNT for Tuesday. Yesterday was uh, such a busy day with stories and today there's a lot of follow-up to those stories. So let's get started. And we start with Thai PBS World saying that arrest warrants have been issued for suspects in murder of German businessman. Now, this story moved very, very quickly yesterday, and we'll go through sort of chronologically what happened. But let's start with this uh, initial story from Thai PBS World. A Thai courts issued arrest warrants for two suspects linked to the gruesome murder of German real estate broker Hans-Peter Mack in Chombri province. The suspects were identified as a German national Olaf, uh, also referred to as Orif in other media. Thorsten Brinkman and Thai national Petra Christi Grungriff. A pretty unusual name for a Thai national. Chombri's Nongpru police said that a warrant for the arrest of Brinkman was issued after police examined security camera footage, saw him sitting in the back of a pickup truck next to the freezer, in which police later found the dismembered body of Mac. Grungriff is thought to have acted as a decoy to lure Mac to his death. They're wanted for allegedly conspiring to murder and concealing, transporting and destroying a body. And some media outlets claim the police are gathering evidence to charge a third suspect, a Pakistani national, for involvement in the crime. And we'll find out more about him in just a moment. Moving now to the PatayaNews.com, which had excellent coverage uh, as this story continued to unfold yesterday. And main suspect in murder of Hans-Peter Mack arrested in Pattaya by Thai police. And there's a picture of his uh, arrest, obviously blurred out as... Uh, is their want from time to time when it suits them. And a team of police led by Surachat Hakpan, better known by his popular nickname of Big Joke. Do we really need to be reminded about this every single time they write an article about him? It's like they're trying to fill in space. Anyway, Orif, sometimes called Olaf, has been the main suspect wanted in the murder of Hans-Peter Mack, a 62-year-old German businessman, and is accused of being the ringleader of the operation. And Mr. Mack had been missing since July the 4th, with a 3 million baht reward offered for finding him safely. Unfortunately, his dismembered and mutilated corpse was found in a freezer at a villa in the Chok Chai Garden Village 1 last evening. That was Sunday evening. And this took place after another suspect in the murder of Hans surrendered today, that's yesterday, and a person of interest who resided at the home where Mr. Mack's dismembered body was found was discovered hiding at a restaurant, although police have not called her a suspect. We'll find out more about her arrest in just a moment. There were little details released around the capture of ORAF other than the team being led by Big Joke. This is the deputy police commander. Said ORAF had denied all charges and accusations and asked for a lawyer. This leaves only one prime suspect still loose, a 27-year-old Pakistani who's believed to have assisted in the transport of the freezer carrying the dismembered body of Mac. Moving now to the arrest of uh, this disabled woman and again the PatiaNews.com. Thai police find disabled German woman connected with suspects who allegedly murdered Hans-Peter Mack in Pattaya. An immigration and tourist police in Pattaya tracked down and found a disabled German woman who was a tenant at the house where the dismembered body of the German businessman was discovered. Police stressed that the woman was not a suspect, but they merely wanted to interview and speak with her due to being a resident at the home. And the woman, who is disabled and has difficulty walking, was identified as Ms Nicole Feverell, 52, and resided at the home in the Chok Chai village. And Nicole had fled to a restaurant in Soy Khao Noi and was discovered hiding in a small back room. This happened at around 5 p.m., yesterday according to the Patia News story. When law enforcement discovered her hiding place, Nicole allegedly used a knife to self-harm herself in one of her arms, leaving a significant gaping slash wound. She reportedly shouted at police that she would die today rather than being pursued. Law enforcement managed to get the knife away from her and calm her down, reiterating that she was not a suspect. According to her, she merely resided at the residence and said that Mr. Oraf Thorsten Brinkman also often stayed at the home, brought the freezer containing the body to the home. Nicole claimed to Thai police she did not know what was in the freezer and was threatened by Oraf. 
She said she slept near the freezer for two days without knowing what was in it until she saw the news about the freezer being traced. And the article goes on the third prime suspect, another German woman, referred to there as a German woman, not a Thai national, surrendered to Thai police yesterday afternoon with her lawyer. So let's go to the surrender of uh, this German woman, also referred to as a Thai national. And it says uh, the German woman surrenders to Thai police in Patia for alleged involvement in murder of Hans Peter Mack. Again, reported very well by the Patianews.com. And Mrs. Petra Christie Grungriff, accompanied by a lawyer, surrendered to Thai police at 3 p.m. yesterday. She had an active arrest warrant for alleged involvement in the murder and dismembering of the German businessman. She'd previously been interviewed by Thai police over the weekend, but at the time they did not have enough evidence to detain her. All three suspects are charged with intentionally killing others and jointly hiding the body. And then this next paragraph, again, the case is also being overseen by several high-ranking Royal Thai Police, including top Thai police officer Surachat Hakpan, better known by his nickname of Big Joke, again. The same day we're reminded, this is the Deputy Commander of the Royal Thai Police. Let's give him just a modicum of respect. And police told Thai media that a red Yamaha N-Max motorcycle was seized by police and it was used by what he believes was the ringleader of the murder, Oraf. The motorbike was found abandoned next to a beer bar in Nong Pru and Oraf is believed to be attempting to flee authorities as we saw earlier. He has been arrested last night. Now uh, that leaves the 27-year-old Pakistani still at large and by the time this TNT comes out, uh, he could indeed be in custody. But a lot of movement in that case yesterday. I'll have a little bit more to say about uh, some of the comments in the uh, TNT comments section yesterday a bit later on in the program. In the meantime, a big thank you to our sponsor, Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description of this video if you'd like to take advantage of that discount. Tuesday's TNT, let's follow on from uh, some of the other stories yesterday that collapsed that very dramatic video showing the collapse of uh, uh, an overpass being constructed near Lat Krabang. And BangkokPost.com reports heavy machinery led to road collapse, initial probe finds. And the BMA said preliminary investigations indicate that heavy equipment lifting a concrete segment caused the collapse of an elevated road under construction on Luang Pang Road on Monday evening, killing two people, injuring 12 others. The collapsed 600 metre section is part of the 2.2 kilometre long Onut to Lat Krabang elevated road project. And thanks to the commenter who reminded me that uh, in fact Lat Krabang is not halfway between Bangkok and Pattaya. It's indeed just near the Sawanapum airport. I was getting myself confused with the, uh, the big seaport which is halfway between Bangkok and Pattaya. And uh, the story says the two people were killed were an engineer and a construction worker. All the injured were construction workers who His Majesty has accepted as patients under royal patronage. Well, that obviously is a very kind gesture, but rather unusual. Is that going to happen with all patients of road construction incidents? And the story says that many vehicles were crushed, a building was damaged and several power poles were toppled. And the Bangkok governor said that an initial investigation revealed that a beam launcher for installing a concrete segment between the 83rd and the 84th ground columns of the elevated road suddenly tilted and became unstable, leading to the accident. And he said it's a joint consortium of two companies, Tarawan Construction and NPA Construction, who won the 1.664 billion baht project. And fuel vapour hazard at the site of the collapsed Lat Krabang bypass, Luang Pang Road, is expected to be reopened to traffic in three days. And the danger of fuel vapour explosion at a petrol station is adding to the hazard of clearing a long collapsed section of elevated highway. And it says the task of clearing was made more hazardous by limited space and the need for extreme caution because of a close by petrol station where vapour emissions had to, had to be continuously monitored. 
So they're hoping to get that section of road open within three days and let's hope that uh, somehow an investigation can be launched showing what the problems were and somehow hoping that uh, we can avoid these in the future. Now, uh, more dramatic news yesterday and quite unexpected, reported by BangkokPost.com, Prayut retiring from politics and the Prime Minister, the outgoing Prime Minister, Prayut chan has announced his retirement from politics nine years after he took power in a coup as Army Chief. He said, from now on, I want to quit politics, resigning as a member of the United Thai Nation Party. And General Prayut did not run in the May 14 election as a party list MP, but served as the chief advisor to the UTN and was one of its two prime ministerial candidates. And General Prayut, 69, said yesterday that he'd achieved many successes in his nine years in office. This is the time that politicians like to rewrite history. He says, I, as Prime Minister, have worked hard to protect the nation, religion and monarchy for the benefit of the beloved people. The result is currently bearing fruit for the public. As we sit just one day away from his 250 hand-picked senators casting a big shadow over the election of Thailand's next Prime Minister. And he says, I've tried to strengthen the country in all areas for stability and peace and overcame many obstacles domestically and internationally. Checking some other media coverage on this, we go to thaipbsworld.com. Update, Prayut quits politics. And his statement was posted on the party's Facebook page. So these days you don't have a media conference in front of the media and the Thai people. You just make a posting on a Facebook page. Uh, We go to this coverage, however, on coconuts.co, their Bangkok edition, Prayut Chanochar, 21st century Thai dictator, 2014 to 2023. I think you can see where this particular coverage is going. Nine years after he vowed to put smiles on everyone's faces by seizing control of the country and granting himself absolute power, General Prayut Chanochar hobbled out of the political arena today. He was 69. And the cause of his retirement was the complete rejection by the public. He once ruled by fiat. Nothing like a small Italian car to uh, put fear in your hearts. And by social media metrics, there were about 4,500 thumbs up or heart emojis as of publication time and no sad or shocked faces. This is talking about his Facebook post. And after vowing for weeks that he would not do a coup after months of street unrest fomented by supporters of the status quo to unseat the government of Yingluck Shinawat, Prayut did exactly that. And he called in representatives from both sides of the political divide for a meeting where he informed them that he'd taken administrative control of the country. In short order, he issued an order granting himself absolute power to issue any orders with the force of law, one of which indemnified himself and other coup makers from future prosecution. And then this, well, I think we can call it an editorial, goes on saying, Then the songs began. First there was his toe-tapping, returning happiness to the Thai people. And there was this song that uh, apparently he was involved in writing. And we used to have to play it at the top of every hour on the radio. And still hear it ringing around in my head. And that was followed up by other songs that he wrote to try and sort of uh, make himself look like a benign, quiet, music-loving dictator. And his administration pursued a range of cleanliness and order initiatives such as clearing the streets of vendors and a misguided goal of concreting the banks of the Chao Phraya River to create a tourist-friendly promenade. And then just speaking about the 2017 Charter or Thai Constitution that two elections have now been run under, It says the charter was approved by 61.4% of the voters and with a few alterations by the king, remains in force today. The referendum included a bonus question that led to the establishment of an all-military appointed Senate which tilted the balance of power into the general's hands. And under that provision, the man who trounced Prayut in May, Move Forward Party's Peter Limjoronrat, has slim chance of amassing enough support tomorrow to claim the premiership. And that provision is due to expire next year, however. So yes, the hand-picked senators, their time finishes in May next year. That will also be another interesting time in Thai politics. 
Anyway, that editorial published by coconuts.co, I will put a link in the description because it's uh, really well written. It's obviously uh, quite one-sided against Polayut, but I think you might find it interesting nonetheless. Uh, so thank you to coconuts.co. Now, speaking of uh, Peter Lim Joronrat, he took to the media yesterday and Coconuts Bangkok saying, this is Thailand's opportunity. Peter urges in run-up to PM vote and the head of the Move Forward Party and the presumptive leading candidate to be Thailand's next Prime Minister issued an appeal yesterday morning for the legislature to back a majority government. And two days before the upper and lower house are scheduled to meet and cast a lopsided vote dominated by military appointees to the Senate, Pitar has issued a video statement in which he called for lawmakers to support the will of the people. Well, that vote, of course, starts tomorrow morning at 9.30am Thai time. And Pitar said this is Thailand's opportunity for us to restore some normalcy to the country once again to give Thailand a chance to have a fair and just government again. And at least 10 junta-appointed senators have signalled they will vote for Pitar. However, there are rumours senators will oppose a second round of voting for Pitar if he fails the first. Well, mathematically, we know that he needs another 64 votes, either from those hand-picked senators or from other MPs. That's all going to start tomorrow. It will be a very interesting day indeed. So I'm a little bit hungry. Time for a quick snack. And this is covered by CNN Business. But it's also been covered extensively in Thai media. Too much. Burger King's new offering in Thailand has no meat and 20 slices of cheese. There it is. Look at that. I think we describe that as a cholesterol sandwich. Wow. 20 slices of that gooey cheddar cheese. And this week, the Thai operator of the fast food chain introduced what it called the Real Cheese Burger, a bun filled with as many as 20 slices of American cheese. The item launched on Thai menus on Sunday at a reduced price of 109 baht, compared with the usual price of 380 baht. I don't think I'd be paying 380 baht for 20 slices of cheese. It quickly went viral on social media in Thailand, with many users on TikTok posting videos of them trying the new sandwich. Burger King said, this is no joke, this is for real. And a 25-year-old IT engineer said, this was a bit too much. I could only finish half of it. This is an insane amount of cheese added to one burger. Food is good when things are at the right combination. And Im added, other burgers are already good. I think I'll go back to my double cheeseburger Angus as usual. Another customer said it was just too intense. And the menu edition is an example of how fast food franchises around the world are seeking to gain traction by rolling out zany or eye-catching menu options that they hope will spread across social media. So I think I know what one cheddar slice tastes like. I can imagine that 20 slices altogether put inside a warm bun wouldn't really taste that much different. I'll go by the, uh, the food reviews we've already read and probably avoid that one. Uh, thank you very much for watching today. I am, however, a little bit peckish. I'm heading out for breakfast. Please subscribe to the channel if you get a moment. Tomorrow's going to be a very big day. Probably we'll try and preview what's going to happen in Parliament. Maybe make a few predictions. But a big day in Thai politics tomorrow, whichever way you want to look at it. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.